training them so that they can run the brewery on their own. So probably within a month or two, he will be in charge of the brewing um, on some days because the brewer that we will meet, his name is Joe. Um, I'm not sure he's had a day off in six months uh, because he is the only full-time employee here. So I thought it would just be helpful for me to talk a little bit about the brewing process, how it works real quick, just so that um, when we go in here and see the different parts of the machinery, you'll have some idea. So uh, beer is, has, for the most part, four ingredients in it, uh, water, yeast, barley, uh, and hops. And the process for making it is to take the, the grain, barley or sometimes wheat, um, and to heat it up to about, uh, and the, well, let me back up, is to take malted barley. And so if you go into a grain field and you pick barley, it's gonna be a seed, like a plant seed. And to make it malted, what you do is you take the barley, you wet it down, and put it in a pretty warm, flat space, like an open room. And I've been in houses where they are in buildings where they do this. And it's an open floor up in the cores where cores does it. It is the size of this whole building, and it's just barley on the floor. They keep it wet and warm, like the plant is going to, like the seed is going to grow. The little first part of the tail comes out, like you're planting corn or planting anything else. It gets about the same size as the piece of barley, and then they heat it up to make it stop. So they toast it, and, and that takes the starch that is inside the barley and starts to turn it into sugar. So you have malted barley. It goes into a kettle of water where it is heated to about 170 degrees, and it is left to sit like that for about an hour. And so that malted barley soaks in there. And what you're making is tea, more or less tea. What's happening with that hot water and the barley is sugar is being taken out of the inside of that piece of barley and brought out into the water. And so that's just soaking, you're just soaking the grains. It's like soaking tea to get all the stuff out from inside of the tea bag. Here you're soaking grains to get the sugar out of that piece of barley. The sugar water is moved into a different kettle and we'll see where, where all that goes. And then it is brought to a boil. And that during that boil, hops are added to it. If we were to drink the, the water that is made from just the barley and the sugar, it would taste awful to us. It would be too sweet, and it would be the wrong kind of sweetness, and it, wouldn't, it would be very, very unpleasant. So what the hops do is the hops contribute a little bit of bittering to it. And when we talk about that in here, I'll get some hops out. You can see them and smell them and taste them. Um, they're not good uh, on their own, but they are bitter. And the bitterness of those hops counteract the sweetness of the barley. And at that point, the liquid is called wort. And it's spelled W-O-R-T, but it's pronounced W-E-R-T, because it's a German word, wort. So that wort then is boiled with the hops, and you have then a liquid that has sugar, and it has hops in it. You have to boil it to get the bitterness out of the hops. Hops are a cone, it's a flower, it grows on a vine that grows about 20 feet tall. It is in the same um, plant family as hemp, and also therefore as marijuana. Um, it's a cannabis plant, uh, but not the marijuana kind. Um, has no real drug properties other than the bitterness and some other flavors to them. Um, some of the chemicals in it can taste citrusy like grapefruit. Some of them can taste like um, pine needles or tar a little bit. A lot of different flavors can come out of it. Um, so it's boiled. And from there, it is cooled down very quickly, and then it is moved into a fermenter, and into the fermenter goes the yeast. And the yeast then begins to eat the sugar that is in that water, and yeast then puts out two things, and it's what I tell my students. Beer is the product of yeast eating sugar and farting out CO2 and peeing out alcohol. And that, so, so alcohol and CO2 are waste byproducts of yeast eating sugar. The CO2 is, vented out of the building, the alcohol stays in the water. Not all of the sugar is extracted 
from that wort. And so the biggest enemy for a brewer is infection, that other organisms can get into that liquid and begin to make it go bad in a different way than you want. Um, and so what you'll see, the, what they spend the most time doing in here is cleaning things. And it's like a hospital in their in a restaurant, probably cleaner than a resta any restaurant, I'm sorry to say. Um, but they spend a lot of time just cleaning things to make sure that everything is as spotless as can be, that there are no bacteria, any organisms in there that are gonna get into the beer and start messing things up. So it ferments in the kettles for about three or four days. That's a product, that three or four days is because this is an industrial facility or a production facility. If I do it at home, it takes about a week or two. I mean, that's just because my equipment, everything I do is a little bit slower. Any home brewer is a little slower. But they do it in about three or four days. And then from there, it goes into a different tank where it is cleared. All the yeast is taken out, it is made clear. And then from there, they'll put it in kegs. So it's a pretty simple process from start to finish. They can go from a sack of grain and a sack of hops and a kettle full of yeast to finished beer in about a week um, and be done. And that's generally true for most kinds of beer that are made uh, with the only kind of, uh, the only caveat, the only warning being that the darker the beer is, the longer it usually takes to make. It has to refine and it takes a little, it's a little more subtle. Uh, the clearer the beer, the lighter the beer, the quicker it has to be done. So. Um, so what we'll see is this process, uh, and we'll look at the different pieces of equipment. Again, the floors are a little bit wet, so be careful. Uh, there are drains here and so forth, but, um, but you know. So, question. Yeah. Looking at this second tank here. Yes. It's got a lot coming out of the bottom of yeah. it. That's normal. That's CO2, so they don't vent. They just bring it into a bucket. That is, that is fermentation in action. No. If you go and put your face down next to it and smell it, it'll smell like bread. So that's not a, that's not a leak. No, no, that's <laughs> that's good news for them. <laughs> Seeing that means everything is working as it should be. In my house, that's not good. News. Yeah, in my house, that's not good either. So yeah, so it's a lot of bubbling in a bucket. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, just coming out the bottom there. Oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. That. No, that's cleaning. That that, oh, okay. that they're cleaning the tank. Sorry. If you look at the next one over, there's a tube going oh, into yeah, a bucket and a few others, and that's the fermentation. Okay. So, that's dang, that's a lot of <laughs> Yeah, with that, they are, um, they're cleaning the tank out. They probably just finished a batch that's been moved over to a bright tank. Oh, yeah, so, good question. This, this uh, beer production is measured, measured in barrels, and um, there is, no international standard for what a barrel is. In the United States, a barrel is about 32 gallons, about 31 and a half gallons. Um, a standard keg that you would see somewhere um, at a party for you guys, at a restaurant for you guys, um, a standard keg is, is actually a half barrel, and it's about 15 and a half, 16 gallons. And then there's smaller ones that are look like uh, tubes, and those are called sixtles or torpedoes or something like that. That's a sixth of a barrel. So what you'll see on the front of this is the measurement of it will say 30 BBLS, and that's 30 barrels. Um, so these, each of these fermenters holds 30 barrels of beer, so 30 times, uh, so 30 barrels times 32 gallons, so 900 and some odd gallons. And they will run one of, they'll run, so they have the potential to do one of these a day once they get up and running. Um, and so 30 barrels pretty much every day for seven days a week for 365 days a year, if they could, if they had enough employees and enough demand. So, it's a lot, it's, yeah, a lot. Um, uh, yeah, so. Um, now, what you will also notice is that where they cook the beer and where they clarify the beer is 15 barrels. So what they do is they run their cooker twice, they fill it up once, then do it again and fill it up. The cooking process takes about six hours, more or less, from the time you mash the grains, put the grains in and heat them up like tea. That's an hour and a half. Getting it going takes about 45 minutes or so. Hour and a half of mashing it, moving it over, heating it again. I mean, got about six hours to cook the batch and then put it in the fermenter. Do it twice um, is in one day. We'll fill one of these. And then if they did it every day, they would have the cycle going. Right now, because they're just starting, they don't have the demand going yet. Um, at some small breweries that you see, when they have this much space in their fermenters, but they're not filling them, they'll rent space out. So smaller breweries that are just starting, someone has a really 